All right, we are going to be talking about two lines. They can be skew or they can be parallel, but what we're talking about is the transversal. The transversal is a line that crosses two lines. Again, those lines don't have to be parallel, but for our purposes today, we're going to have two parallel lines crossed by this puppy, which is the transversal. And the transversal creates some pretty cool angles. It creates corresponding angles, alternate angles, and co-interior angles. And I'm going to use uh, my little friends here to help me. So corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal. This is angle uh, gummy bear. And one is inside and one is outside of the two lines. In this case, the lines are pretty much parallel. I did my best to be parallel. And so on the transversal, this one is actually equal to that one. So if I know the value for gummy bear A, I then know the value for gummy bear B. That's for corresponding angles. Now, alternate angles, I'll leave gummy bear A where he is, also pretty cool, but they're both inside the two parallel lines, but they're on alternate sides of the transversal. And guess what? They are also equal. So if I know the value of gummy bear A in degrees, that will be exactly the same value for gummy bear B alternate angles. Now, these gummy bears like each other very much, and they want to live in the same house, so they are co-interior angles. Co-interior angles are on the same side of the transversal, not like the alternate that was over here. Like, look at this guy. He wants in on the action. Uh, I'm not allowing that. And then these two are on the same side of the transversal, and they're both within these two lines. So the co-interior angles are not equal, but if you add them together, very handy, they add up to 180 degrees. So let's look at it on paper, see what that looks like. Okay, so here's an example on paper. The points are lettered, that's how we can name the angles. So first let's see if we can find ourselves one or more corresponding angles. Now remember what our gummy bear friends taught us, corresponding angles are on the same side of the transversal, but one is inside and one is outside of the two lines same side of the transversal. We also have them on the other side if you wanted to mark them, but that's how corresponding angles look. Alternate angles, maybe I'll try a different one here. Uh, alternate angles are on alternate sides of the transversal. Remember the transversal travels between two lines, in this case parallel lines. And so these two, just like the corresponding ones, will be equal to each other. If you know the value of this angle, then you know the value of that angle. And the last one are the co-interior angles. So the co-interior angles are actually going to be on the same side of the transversal. So we'll make you, you can do double duty as purple, and this. So the transversal runs here. They're both on, in this case, the left side of the transversal. So the co-interior angles, only when these two lines are parallel, they will add up when you add them to 180. So if you know the value of one of these, you take 180 and subtract that value, and you've got the value of its compatriot. Now, looking at an example here, we have these two parallel lines, and parallel lines are marked by the same number of arrows, showing that they're parallel. And here comes our transversal. Remember, a transversal goes through any two lines, but when they're parallel, we get those unique properties where we can know that they're either equal to each other or they add up to 180 degrees. So parallel is the key here. So in this example, we want a corresponding angle to A, B, F. We could also call this A, B, G, this angle, and also remember you have to have the angle symbol in front of it, but both of them would, would clearly show us to this angle. So in this case, the corresponding angle to A, B, F is over here, because that's on the same side of the transversal. One is inside the two lines, one is outside the two lines. So what can we call this angle? Our options are H, F has to be in the middle because that's the vertex, G, G, F, H. That's what we would put there as a corresponding angle. Now, if we're looking for an alternate angle, so the alternate angle, we're going to start in the same place here at A, B, F. An alternate angle to A, B, F is on the opposite side of the transversal, uh, but still within the two lines. So this we could call angle B, F, E, or angle E, F, B, or angle C, F, E, as long as the F is in the middle, because that's the vertex, or angle E, F, C. The co-interior is, oh, we made that purple, didn't we? 
we're going to use our same starting point, angle A, B, F. There he is, our little puppy. And then the co-interior of that is going to be right across the way. It's almost like cohabitating in the same house. The co-interior is there. And how are we going to name him? He's going to be either H, F is the vertex, B, or H, F, H, F, C, or C, F, H, or B, F, H. As long as we can hef our way through and make sure that the F is the vertex, and we use these other points to make sure that we're on this side and not on that side. That would be that would be just criminal. Vertically opposite is uh, another color I need. Let's go vertically opposite. So if we're going to use the same starting angle as A, B, F in this example, the one that's vertically opposite is bang across over here. So it's kind of hop, skipped, and jumped its way across to the other side, and it's outside the line in this case. You can see here that that angle and this angle are opposite to each other. So a vertically opposite angle is also equal to so whatever this is, is in degrees, A, B, F. That's going to be the same degrees for angle. Got to write the angle symbol. C, B, D, D, B, C, angle. 